All right, I'll be short. A really disappointing game tonight, um, both sides of the ball. Uh, we really talked about how important the start was and to find ourselves in that big a hole right away, just set the tone. Their physicality bothered us in the first half. I thought we responded that second unit moved the ball better and, and cut better, and we were more aggressive getting into the paint. We, with the exception of that last minute, probably would have won the second half as a moral victory for them to make them feel a little bit better, but uh, they just uh, right now are really, really struggling with physicality and everyone's seeing it um, on film and, and that's what we're getting every night from every team. And as much as um, the physicality is uh, being allowed in this league, we've got to make the adjustment. We have got to be able to handle the physicality. I got to go, I got to go do my job and help them, but uh, Right now we're getting out toughed and it's uh, a young team that gets on their heels in a hurry when they're out toughed. Yeah, Coach, uh, you already mentioned that the slow start, it took about three minutes to even get a point in for the Sparks tonight. And there have been a few other games where there have been some scoring droughts that kind of turned the tide when things were more in a 50-50 scenario. Um, what does the team have to do to kind of get out of that funk and just kind of get some easy baskets, especially early on in this contest? Well, it's hard when you know you shoot 20%. You know, I think we had one player shoot over 25%. One player shoot over 25% tonight. So you, you, it's a make or miss league. You've got to make some plays, but we've got to get separation in our screening. And the physicality is blowing up all our off ball screens, on ball screens, and we're not getting any separation um, to go back and attack people. Coach, when you're down 28 points, it almost seems like, you know, almost irregardless of what you do, like, you just can't come back. So how do you help your team uh, just not get down by that many points, just period, and then, you know, when it is the, the 11 or the 15, something that's, you know, a bit more insurmountable, like, how do you, you know, get them to, like you say, like, play tough when, you know, you just don't have – the practice time like like how, how do you do it yeah we talked in the locker room just now that you, you, we don't have time to fix things like we've got to be able to fix things in games in this type of season and that's really difficult during a build but uh you know again um you know at one point you looked up and you were down 14 or 12 points and you'd shot less than 25 percent for the game and so you're like you know, if we could just string some shots together and get it to single digits, uh, but you know, again, that's a, a frustrating, a frustrating game on both sides of the ball. Coaches, uh, what's the psyche of the the team right now? Like, they did fight their way back there in the fourth quarter, but you did see some players with their heads down off of small mistakes that they made. What's the psyche of the team? Yeah, I think they're disappointed. I think they know they're not playing to the level that they, they hold themselves accountable on where we want to go. Um, so, you know, they're disappointed, um, but not discouraged. Uh, they believe that um, they, these things can be corrected, but uh, they've got to they've throw the first punch, and uh, we've got to eliminate the slow first quarters. And Coach Fredo here with the Sporting Tribune. You know, you've now lost seven out of your first nine games this season. What do you want to get more out of your team right now? Of course, whether it's Cameron Brain, whether it's, uh, you know, Kia Nurse or possibly Lexi. Well, I, I mean, we don't have to go down the roster individually. We just have to be, uh, I would like us to be more competitive and put ourselves in position to, uh, you know, steal wins here and there. Um, at this moment, uh, we're digging ourselves first half a hole. So the wins and losses are, are, you know, taken care of. And so we're just trying to get better right now and continue to keep building. Hey, Coach Jackie Ray, Jackie Ray TV. Um, you talked about the physicality of the game. When you're trying to get the team over that hump, is it just the physical or is it also a mental toughness that you need them to get? Yeah, certainly there's, you know, toughness takes on both components. Um, and again, they, this is a really young team with a lot of new pieces that, you know, are, are at times um, overwhelmed by this physicality and the tempo. Um, the one thing that's really impressive with Minnesota right now is their tempo. Um, they're just flying in and out of actions, and it's 
is in, you know, like, the nuances of it is funny, right? It's, we're running very, very similar plays. But when you watch them run it, and you watch us run the exact same buckets of plays, it just looks different. Uh, the physicality in the screening, uh, the approach of coming off of screens. And so we're copycat league in terms of offenses. And so we all run similar things, but you can see the difference in, in how people are executing. So we'll get, we'll get better. Coach Eric Lampkin is the second Culver City Observer. Uh, throughout the season, Lexi and Leja have discussed ad nauseum about the, the salience of the point guard position in this offense. Um, how do you envision the position being played? And of the countless players that you've coached, who most aligns with your vision uh, at that position? You know, Leja brings a toughness and a physicality. Um, Ari, our other true point guard, um, you know, is kind of a counter to Leja, who is more physical and hostage dribbler. Um, and keeps the people on her back where Aerie's going to be more up-tempo and, and downhill. So we have different styles of two point guards. Then a lot of our other guards are truly off guards, you know, that at times have to play as a third string emergency point guard or when you have injuries, Aerie's nursing an ankle injury and Alasia's just back from a weak concussion. So then those off guards are completely different looks at the point guard position. So. Um, you know, it's it's a work in progress at that position, and uh, but you know, Ari and and Leja give us different looks, and and can both be effective in what we're trying to do. Final two questions, Jude. Hey, Coach, uh, Judo Kanyas, Annenberg Media. Cam Brink, uh, Cameron Brink has had uh, five games now with five plus fouls. How are you as a coach trying to teach defensive principles when it comes to be when it comes to being smarter with their hands on the defensive side? Yeah, it's the you know, it's the. Um, the, the the hard part of having an elite shot blocker is you've got to give her the confidence to hunt some of those opportunities and help side. But, you know, challenging her through film and, and teaching and learning, uh, this is not anything new. She battled this in college also on when maybe you have to let a play go or when um, you know that you're just a, a little bit late and you're not going to be able to affect that shot to play more minutes because sometimes one less foul could could accumulate eight to ten more minutes for us on the court and her presence is really important that way so it's a maturation um she's heard it from you know a lot of hall of fame coaches throughout her career and you just got to keep showing it to her and you know she's a really really impactful defender if she can cut out a foul here or there last question uh, Coach, you have another um, tough physical team rematch with Dallas coming up. I mean, how specifically do you plan to counter their physicality? Yeah, different. You know, like every team is a little bit different. Obviously, Minnesota is defined by their sharing of the basketball and their movement and their tempo in and out of things. Obviously, Dallas's focal point is Enrique and a lot of actions, but then they have a gigantic roster with Tierra McCowan and Kalani Brown and Soares and, and, and now Mo Billings, they have a lot of size around the rim. So sometimes we, outside of Arike, their best offense sometimes is on the offensive glass. So, you know, it'd be real big, big point of emphasis on how well we rebound against Dallas on Friday. Okay, uh, Ray. Just, you know, you were able to be impactful today, um, and I think a key thing was the way that you were able to move without the ball. How, was in, how important is that to your game? Yeah, um, I just want to come in and bring energy, and, you know, we emphasize a lot on moving without the ball and cutting to the ball because, you know, they were being pretty cluttering in, in, the, uh, in the paint, so I just was trying to do the things that um, we were looking for. Um, but, yeah, I just most of the time just trying to bring energy when I come into the game. Questions for Derek. Um, you still had a pretty good uh, shooting night offensively, you know, given the circumstances. But there were a few passes that looked like they were just a little bit out of position for you, and you had to kind of lean over and reach over. Mm -hmm. It wasn't in prime position for you. Um, what's the communication like with the guards and the wings on getting the ball where you want and where those spots are on the floor? Uh, that just comes with time, and you know, 
players learning how to play with each other. We knew that they were going to be overly physical and that their post players are really good defensively and making uh, pushing catches out and getting their hands on a lot of balls and they ball pressure. Um, and we were we were just soft and we were vulnerable to their ball pressure. It's got to be better. Hey, Dierica and Ray, uh, this question is for both of you. Coming off of that long road trip, how much did fatigue affect tonight's performance? We can't use fatigue as an yeah. excuse. You know, everybody has the same schedule. Rather, you get it earlier, you get it late, there's still everybody's playing with 40 games a season. Um, so we can't complain about fatigue. Okay. Thank you. Hey, Dierica, Fredo here with the Sporting Tribune. You know, this, despite your career numbers you've been putting up early in the year, you know, the team has now lost seven out of the first nine games. As leader of this team, how can you kind of keep your teammates motivated, focused, and determined to kind of, you know, take care of the weekend series here? Yeah, that's what we just discussed in the locker room. We got to we gotta find the heart and the passion that we were playing with the first, like the preseason games and the first three or four games of the season. And losing is deflating, um, but bigger picture, we know it's a long season. We know we're rebuilding in a sense. Um, people got to find their confidence again. We can't shoot 26%. You're, I mean, 77 shots is incredible, but 26% is embarrassing. For Dierica and Andre, how do you change the mindset, or how does the team change the mindset to, you know, play tougher and, like you said, not, not be soft? I mean, you, that, you gotta light fire under people's butts and figure out the best way to get them to respond. Um, and that's gonna be different for everybody. Little things you can do to find your confidence, get in the gym, uh, watch more film, get in a playbook, um, and keep playing and compete in practice. Yeah, and just flat out be tougher. Yeah, that's like you, that's hard, you know. And unfortunately, you can't necessarily teach that, but you got to find a way to spark it. Okay. No, no. Hey, uh, question for both of you guys. I know it's been. A tough stretch and obviously this is a tough game but what are some positives that you guys can take out of this I know that you know it's always good to look on the bright side of things sometimes so what's something that individually you guys will be taking out from this game uh, we got another game in two days and we get to keep playing basketball and it's, this is our job and it's, it's fun and we got another game in two days I agree <laughs> This is for either one of you. Can you discuss how critical it is for uh, your point guards uh, to be to be on uh, in order for you all to have success? I mean, I feel like it's an every everybody thing. I mean, obviously, like point guards have to kind of get us together, but I feel like it's just hard and effort from everybody all around. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you.